Hey everybody, welcome back to Extreme IE. In this video, we are going to deploy Docker um, on a Ubuntu server that's running out in AWS, and we're gonna actually get a container up and running. Now, as I was doing this, as I was getting this lab ready, I, I had a random thought, and I wanted to just kind of preach it to you for a minute. Um, get out of your comfort zone. Uh, we spend all day doing the same thing typically over and over and over again. We have all these repetitive tasks throughout the day and we never really have an opportunity to learn something new. So you're, you know, you're watching these videos to learn, you know, about containers a little bit. That's awesome. But everything that we do in the world right now is moving to the cloud. At some point, everything that I'm showing you is going to be obsolete because AWS, Google, Azure, they're all coming out with their own managed Kubernetes service where you essentially don't have to do anything. You just click the check boxes, you, you name some options, you know, you, you, you select what you want, you click submit and you're done. Um, so my point is, as I was deploying this server in AWS, you know, I was tempted to do to just do it, you know, through VMware Workstation. And I, and I wanted to just tell you guys, get out of your comfort zone, right? We're all used to VMware. We're all used to, you know, Hyper-V, all those things. If you haven't taken a moment to learn any type of cloud provider yet, or you haven't learned them all, you know, take a moment, sign up for a free account in Google, Azure, AWS, whichever one you don't know, take a day and learn how to deploy a server. Learn how to get to it remotely like I'm doing here. Um, it's not that hard. It just takes, you know, a couple hours. So take some time, learn how to do it, and this way you have a lab. You're learning containers at the same time as getting familiar with um, getting familiar with the cloud provider, right? So rant over. Today, again, we're going we're gonna to deploy Docker. Um, I am going to just follow the documentation here. A lot of this stuff I actually have in my brain. Um, you know, for example, removing old versions of Docker. You know, this is kind of the, the standard... Um, the standard process that I go through. If you follow the documentation down, I'm actually just going to copy and paste these right from um, right from the website um, because it just makes it easier rather than me having to, to type it in uh, manually. My point is is that if you just literally follow this document, you'll be able to get a container up and running. The one thing that I will tell you, do not skip, is setting up the repository. You absolutely must do this. Uh, some of the commands down here, for example, are going to require curl. So you're going to need to install all of your dependencies. Don't skip this part. If you do, what's going to happen is when you actually get to install uh, the Docker images themselves, which are down here, when you get to this step, you're not going to find these. There are not going to be packages that are available to you because you've skipped having to actually update your repository, which brings me to my next rant. Um, these are very basic Linux architecture things that we're doing, right? In, in Most of the time when you're going to deploy something, you're going to deploy packages, you're going to install software, you know, you're, you're going to have to update the repository, you're going to have to update Linux, you're going to have to do these things. It's kind of like a standard practice, right? So if you're not familiar with Linux, if you've never used it before, you're not familiar with the commands, again, take a day, take a couple hours, watch some videos, deploy a, a, you know, a Linux workstation, and learn how to do it. The last thing that we're going to do is we're actually just going to paste this command right here. We're going to get a um, an Apache server up and running. You know, we're not going to test it, we're not going to design a web page, we're not going to do all of that stuff. All we're going to do is actually deploy a container so that you can see how easy it really is, okay? So let's go ahead and let's just get started. All I've done here is I've updated this particular container. So the first thing that we'll do, again, if you have a, a second screen and you're following along, let me actually just make sure that I've, I've updated my the privilege here. We'll say app get, and we're going to remove all of the previous versions of any remnants of Docker. Now, I have wh why are we doing this? I have been in customer sites before where uh, container D, um, container D, uh, have been in customer um, sites before where the template, the Linux template that they used had an old version of Docker installed and running um, and you know they really didn't even know that it was there. So take a moment, go ahead and remove any of the old versions that, that you might find. It, you may just also want to just go ahead and look for any versions that are there just so that you make sure you, you get them all. So next we're going to say uh, apt install, we're going to say CA certificates. Oops, there's a dash there. Certificates, we're gonna put this backslash. What this allows us to do is actually have multiple lines. So as we do this, we can type uh, we can type multiple things. You can also, in some versions, um, just put them in a straight line across and it will install all of them. That's another way to do this. And on the last command, we're not gonna put a backslash and so we'll just hit enter, okay? CA certificates, did I not type that right? Let's, nope, certifications. So let's do this again. And we'll say certificates. I don't know why I said certifications. There we go. All right, so now, once I'm done, I'm going to go back here to this site here. We're going to scroll down, and I'm going to copy and paste these commands just to make our lives easier. So we'll go back here, and we'll copy and paste this. 
put this in. Okay, now after we're done doing that, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna say apt get and we wanna say update. The reason why we're doing this, you're gonna notice here that now when we go and run an update, we're actually updating and downloading Docker packages. This allows us to actually connect into Docker's website and download the images, right? If we didn't update our key rings, we wouldn't have been able to actually get those. We wouldn't have been able to download those images securely. So we're gonna say apt get now we're going to say install and we're going to go ahead and download the actual images that we're going to need to install docker so we're going to say docker ce docker ce cli uh, container d i'm having a brain fart here for a second dot io and then docker uh, compose plugin does that look right docker 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 yes that should work okay now if I wanted to, I could have put a, uh, a slash y, uh, a minus y here, uh, so that I didn't have to ask or, or say yes. We'll go ahead and install Docker. Just take, a, take about a minute or so. I may pause the, uh, the video here. In fact, let me do that. I'll pause it and I'll come right back as soon as it's finished. Okay, so anytime you want to run a container, you're going to start with the, the term docker run. This is the command to actually run containers. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull a default image right from docker for hello world. What this is going to do is it's actually going to test our implementation. It's going to automatically download an image and then it's going to run it. And you can see hello from docker. And so it lets us know that our, our image is actually running properly. It tests the daemon, it, it, it tests everything about docker and says hey, you know, this is running good. Now you can go and you can download more images. You can here, you can, you actually have Docker up and running. You can go play. The easiest thing that I have found to actually test things is again, just run a simple Apache, uh, Apache uh, server. You can go to hub.docker.com and this is going to give you official images right from Docker to be able to download and play with. Now I'm not going to go through a Docker file. I'm not going to go through any of that. All I'm going to do is copy and paste this image here. What it's going to do is it's going to create an application. It's going to create a container. It's going to use a specific Docker image and it's going to run on port 80. So we'll go back here. We'll paste this guy in. You can see that it downloads the image. And from here, I can say Docker uh, container and type ls for list. And you can see that I have a container actually up and running. It's been running for the last, you know, 16 seconds or so. So this is really how easy it is to get your container environment. If you're just going to do Docker, if you just want to test things or, or run images, this is how easy it is to actually get Docker installed and get a container up and running. Now, if you're going to develop an application, that's a little bit more complicated, right? Because you're actually going to have to download specific packages. You're actually going to have to log into your container and get things running. But as far as um, as far as just getting a container installed and up and running, this is how easy it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.